हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ इन ग्लाइकोजन मेटाबोलिज्म सो इन ग्लाइकोजन मेटाबोलिज्म वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन ग्लाइकोजीनेसिस दैट वॉज द सिंथेसिस ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन नाउ वी कम टू द ग्लाइकोजीनोलाइसिस हियर लाइसिस इज वॉट ब्रेक डाउन सो इट इज द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन इन टू ग्लूकोज सो वी स्टार्ट विथ ग्लाइकोजीनोलाइसिस so glycogenolysis is what it is the breakdown of glycogen to glucose and is known as glycogenolysis it this glycogenolysis involves phosphorylase enzyme that phosphorylase enzyme is very important in activation this phosphorylase enzyme is present in muscle also in in liver also so glycogenolysis is initiated by a specific enzyme that is phosphorylase this phosphorylase enzyme jo hai that is mainly involved for the breakdown of 1 4 bonding and it converts this glycogen into glucose 1 phosphate this liver and muscle both contain this enzyme muscle phosphorylase is not affected by glucagon but liver phosphorylase is affected by glucagon and this uh, muscle phosphorylase it requires four molecules of pyridoxal phosphate for its activity then only it start activity calcium ion calmodulin can bring about glycogenolysis in muscle and liver it is independent of cyclic amp so calcium ion modulation is also there it it is independent of cyclic amp now we come to the glycogenolysis first step so on the first step glycogenolysis is what phosphorylation action so enzyme phosphorylase is active so what this enzyme does here you can see these are the branches of glycogen molecule so highly branched molecule of glycogen we have only taken two branches you can see one is this branch and second is this branch they have one four bonding this also have one four bonding only one bonding you can see this is one six bonding so phosphorylase enzyme what it does it removes glucose one 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 in sequence all glucose until the four glucose remains so it removes removes all the glucose residues until the four glucose molecule remains so you can see 1 2 3 4 are remaining and rest in the form of glucose 1 phosphate are removed in the same way in the next branch you see 1 2 3 4 molecules are remaining and rest are removed so it is the rate limiting step this enzyme is key enzyme for the activation and stimulation of this glycogen breakdown this enzyme breaks one four bonding and removes all glucose molecule from its outermost chain of glycogen and until four glucose residues are remaining so in the first step what it is doing it removes all glucose in form of glucose one phosphate until four glucose molecules are remaining now second in the second step transfer of trisaccharide takes place so after the removal of this glucose 1 phosphate this remaining three glucose in the form of trisaccharide will transfer to the next branch next neighboring branch so you can see this yellow colored i have so shown this glucose in yellow in color this in the form of trisaccharide are transferred to the next uh, branch and the enzyme responsible for this is glucane transferase so in the presence of glucane transferase enzyme it transfers trisaccharide trisaccharide is with three sugar unit three glucose unit to the just neighboring branch so in the first step we saw that glucose one phosphate uh, glucose uh, glycogen removes glucose in form of glucose one phosphate until the four glucose are remaining then from that four glucose the three glucose in the form of trisaccharide are transferred to the next branch now step number 3 in the step 
debranching enzyme comes in action so debranching enzyme what it does it acts on this 16 bonding branch point and it separates this glucose in the form of free glucose so hydrolytic splitting of 16 glycosidic bond requires the action of a specific debranching enzyme this debranching enzyme is also known as amylo 16 glucosidase a molecule of free glucose is produced and this not in form of glucose 1 phosphate we saw in the first step that all the glucose were mo- removed in the form of glucose 1 phosphate but here there is no phosphate it is free glucose is removed this glucose is responsible for the blood sugar increase in blood sugar so now we can revise complete process so this is over glycogenolysis has only three steps in the first step what is there glucose in the form of glucose 1 phosphate are removed by enzyme phosphorylase this is glycogen phosphorylase enzyme and the next glucan transferase enzyme it transfers this trisaccharide into the next neighboring branch and then debranching enzyme it removes this glucose in the form of free glucose which is then converted into glucose 6 phosphate and uh, glycolysis starts now we see what is going with this glucose 1 phosphate what this glucose 1 phosphate are doing next comes the phase glucose of 1 glu- phosphate now this glucose 1 phosphate it combines it can now is converted by mutase enzyme into glucose 6 phosphate so the combined action of phosphorylase and other enzyme glucose 1 phosphate is produced by the action of phosphoglucomutase enzyme this glucose 1 phosphate is converted into glucose 6 phosphate you can see the position from 1 it is coming to the sixth phosphate that's why the position changes the enzyme is mutase enzyme or epimerase as the reaction is reversible in liver and kidney where you have where enzyme gluca glucose 6 phosphatase is present this enzyme converts this glucose 6 phosphate into glucose and which ri- directly reflects the rise in blood glucose so these all glucose 6 phosphate are converted into glucose into free glucose and blood sugar level is increased in where in liver and kidney but in muscle this enzyme is absent muscle don't have this glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme so it cannot convert this glucose 6 glucose glucose 6 phosphate into glucose it converts their glucose 6 phosphate is converted into pyruvate and glycolysis is gone so going on where the pyruvate or lactate is formed in this way muscle glycogen muscle glycogen or you can say muscle phosphorylase or muscle does not act contribute to blood glucose level it cannot increase blood glucose level only liver is responsible for the increase in blood glucose level now regulation of glycogenolysis so glycogenolysis is regulated by epinephrine glucagon and insulin primary enzyme targets in glycogen metabolism are glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase glycogen synthase it was in the glycogenesis and glycogen phosphorylase it is in the glycogenolysis now hormonal regulation we have seen that glycogenolysis is uh, stimulated by epinephrine and glucagon while it is glycogenesis is stimulated by insulin now liver we see about liver in liver and in muscles so in liver glycogen breakdown it is inhibited by glucose 6 phosphate atp and glucose whereas synthesis of glycogen is stimulated by glucose 6 phosphate 
then in muscles synth breakdown of glycogen is stimulated by calcium and amp whereas it is inhibited by glucose 6 phosphate and atp whereas synthesis of glycogen is activated by glucose 6 phosphate now we see that glucagon or epinephrine what they are doing they activate adenyl cyclase enzyme this adenylate cyclase enzyme it converts atp into cyclic amp this cyclic amp what it is done it converts protein kinase it converts inactive protein kinase to active protein kinase this protein kinase then converts phosphorylase enzyme inactive to active this protein kinase it activates inactive protein uh, glycogen phosphorylase into glycogen phosphorylase kinase b huh? it is activated and this activated enzyme now converts glycogen phosphorylase inactivate inactive glycogen phosphorylase to active glycogen phosphorylase and therefore glycogen is degraded so when glucagon and epinephrine are coming then glycogen is degraded whereas insulin is coming then it converts active glycogen phosphorylase into inactive and therefore glycogen is not degraded here the glycogen is synthesized so these are the reverse insulin is reverse of glucagon and epinephrine so epinephrine is in muscle and liver and glucagon in liver in this way it activates now the role of calcium we have seen in muscle what it is there calcium directly inactivate uh, uh, converts uh, glycogen phosphorylate inactivate activated to activated and in this way it acts and converts glycogenolysis that is it degrades glycogen so breakdown of glycogen takes place in this way glycogenolysis is regulated now few more hormone uh, cases we can see here that atp uh, the same say with colorful adenylate cyclase is activated which activates protein kinase 2 protein kinase a inactive to active this is also inactive to active and which directly phosphorylase active is inactive to activate this phosphorylase enzyme is activated and we know phosphorylase active uh, enzyme activated is what it is doing it is breaking glycogen into glucose 1 phosphate now difference in both we can see it is in glycogen synthesis and breakdown so this is inactive to active and ultimately this becomes active and protein phosphatase 1 regulates glycogen metabolism like here you see that glycogen synthase it becomes active to inactive and therefore glycogen synthesis is inhibited by epinephrine so glycogenesis is inhibited and glycogen genolysis is stimulated so thank you very much in this way we finish this topic that is glycogenolysis you can see our past video where, where it was synthesis of glycogen and next video we will upload about the glycogen storage disease